Back in November of 2019, I launched Mule Fishing. And with that, I launched the first ever micro mushroom style jig, the Mule Jig. And obviously, I'm extremely excited about the Mule Jig. That thing has caught me tons of fish, but it's caught thousands of fish across the United States and numerous different species. It's basically done everything I could have ever imagined it would do. That being said, today I'm equally excited because guess what? I am launching its brother the workhorse jig. This jig right here is available in three sizes, 1 16th, 1 8th, and 3 16th, but they all still feature a number six light wire hook. This is a jig designed to do what the mule jig can't really do. It's going to be more so for open water, for deeper water, and for high wind situations. This is a jig I've had in mind for a long time. It's made out of a tungsten resin material, so it's going to be lead free, which I'm obviously excited about, and it's going to just do some things that the mule jig can't quite do. So really, this is a complementary jig. So you've got the deep water applications, you've got the shallow water applications, um, and at the end of the day, they're all designed for light line multi-species. So today I am going to show you how I'm gonna fish with these jigs, and then I'm just gonna kinda talk about what went into the design. So without further ado, let's start catching some fish because that's why I'm really here. Let's go. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with the 1 16th ounce variety. I've got it rigged on two pound test. So the thing about a 1 16th ounce jig, it might sound like it's really light, but when you're running it on two pound test, that is going to have a pretty quick rate of fall. I'm also gonna pair it with a Mule Minnow 1.2, which is obviously a very slender, and it's going to have a very streamlined drop. So I'm gonna be able to get this thing down there as long as I'd want to. Now, obviously I've got the 1 8th ounce model and then the 3 16th ounce model, and they're actually rigged up in the back of the kayak. Um, so I'm really gonna be able to cover down on a lot of different depths with this here setup. Now just like the mule jig it features a high quality uh, bait keeper so you're just gonna thread that on there. You know this plastic is obviously very very durable so you kind of have to manhandle it a little bit but you're gonna run that down there bring the hook out where it's gonna come through rig it as straight as you possibly can. I worked that plastic around the hook bend and now I'm just gonna pinch pull over that keeper keep it nice and straight and that right there is just a little juicy morsel. These jigs are really designed, because they have that number six hook, they're designed to pair with small plastics, one inch long, two inches long, three inches long, but anything above that, you know, is not necessarily what these are designed for. These jigs are really about bringing microplastics into deeper water, because obviously we all know that fish don't always stay in less than 10 foot of water. Sometimes they go out deep, sometimes they suspend over 50 foot of water, and the mule jig, while it can be presented effectively in deeper water, usually it requires it to be a pretty still day. Whereas the workhorse jig, obviously there's enough weight to where when there's chop on the water, you can still fish deeper and you can still cover water in the shallows too. You can obviously run these a little bit faster. They're kind of designed for both swimming, dock shooting, as well as just open water vertical presentations. There we go. Took me a while. There we go. I located one. Well, I've had a hard time finding the offshore grass. I had to come up just a little bit shallower to find it. We've got quite a bit of chop on the water, and uh, there we are. We're on the board, we've got a little crappie. We're on about an eight to 10 foot weed line right now. I tried looking deeper, but I wasn't really locating very much grass, and I wasn't locating very many fish, so I decided I'm gonna try to get up a little bit shallower, and here we go, we got some crappie. Not a bad little crappie. No, actually he is a pretty small little crappie. There you go. We've definitely got a little bit of wind today, but more important than that, we've got a lot of boat traffic. Every couple minutes, I got a pontoon going by me. We've got a bunch of sailboats out here. And so I'm getting blown around a good bit. And that's why, you know, this jig is actually kind of beneficial because it allows me to continue to focus on my presentation, even though there's lots of chop on the water. Now, right now I could absolutely be getting away with a mule jig because this is a little bit shallower weed bed, but imagine if I was doing this in 30 foot of water. You know, if I was in 30 foot of water, obviously the mule jig is not exactly built for that. God, they're just eating this thing as it falls. This one, eh, no, they're all pretty small. I'm definitely on a big group of small crappie. There's another one. Well, dinky crappie. Dinky, dinky, dinky crappie. Where the big slabs are, I don't know. There you go. Lots of these fish here, they're just all pretty small. Happy to be catching them though. There's one. I'm gonna try something real quick. Okay, dinky, dinky, dinky fish. I'm gonna try something just a little bit different. So I've got three rods with me today. So here is the 1 8 ounce model, chartreuse with a Dakota Sunrise Donkey Tail Junior. I'm gonna try to actually swim this a little bit faster, cover a little bit more water, keep it high in the water column and actually actively swim it 
and just see if these crappie are actually willing to chase. Ooh, I think I just had a short strike right there. And this is definitely part of the design as well. You know, it's a vertical jig, it's a deeper water jig, but it's also kind of a swimming jig. So if you're ever in a situation where you want to cover a little bit more water, in a situation like this where there's chop on the water and there's wind, um, this little bit heavier jig allows you to more actively fish, we'll say. So I don't know if the, the crappie will respond quite as well to the swimming technique today, but there are certainly days where crappie and bluegill are very aggressive and you can target them with a little bit more of a moving presentation. There you go. That one ate it while I was swimming it. And I'm just skating him across the top because again, these are pretty dinky crappie. One of the other things that I'm really excited about with this jig is, you know, we've got a bunch of yellow perch up here, but no matter where you are, obviously, you know, panfish can be kind of bottom oriented from time to time. And using this little bit heavier jig, let's say you're, you've got an active uh, school of perch in 30 foot of water, you could run maybe the 1 8 or the 3 16 and just absolutely bang it off the bottom. Now the thing about this head design is that it's designed to sit semi-flat on the bottom. The beauty of if you pair it up with a mule plastic, all of my mule plastics are extremely buoyant, so they're gonna allow that jig to kind of lift a little bit. So it's not like a typical stand up like the mule jig has, it's more of a flat, slight stand up. And uh, I really like that, that's exactly what I wanted because I wanted to be able to bang bottom while vertically presenting for something like a yellow perch, a rock bass, maybe if a crappie's located on the bottom, whatever. You name it, um, if there's some bottom-oriented multi-species action available, banging this thing around in a little bit deeper water could be a lot of fun. I thought maybe he was gonna be a big one. Nope. It's so hard to leave. When you get so many bites, it's like I just keep telling myself the next one's gonna be a 12-incher. I think that might be wishful thinking. This is definitely one style of fishing I envision doing a lot of with the workhorse jig. Basically just pitching it out there right next to my kayak and doing more of a vertical presentation. And one just bit that right there. Now when I twitch this thing, it has a nice dart. So if I go like this, it's gonna dart up and then it's gonna fall back down. And one actually had it right there, but I wasn't paying attention. Dart it once, drop it, dart it. There he's got it. Little dinky crappie. There you go. Ooh, some of them will try to pull hard, but they're just not that big. Ah, geez, they're squirmy though. Watch my line. I knew I had one because uh, my line stopped sinking and it didn't make sense. And that fish, I actually somehow, what did I wrap around him? Yeah, my line's like wrapped around him. He ate it. I actually hate it really good, but my line wrapped around his fin. At what point is enough enough? I need to probably make moves, but it's so hard when you see a graph like that, there's just fish everywhere. There you go, workhorse jig right in the noggin. Another one. This crappie right here will be my last crappie in this location. See ya, buddy. I am going to make moves because as much fun as I'm having right here, um, I wanna go try to find some little bit bigger fish. I'm actually gonna cross all the way to the other side of the lake. There you go. Hey, a little bit better crappie. And when I say a little bit better, I mean he's very small still, but man, I hooked him good. Looky there, ah, okay. Why are they all so floppy today? They are so floppy today. Ow, ow, ow. Dorsal fins in my palm, not fun. I'm seeing bluegill up in like six inches of water today. I was not expecting that. I thought I was gonna find some bluegill off a little deeper, but all we're finding is aggressive small crappie. And I'm not mad about catching crappie. I just wish that they had a couple bigger ones in the mix, but there's a pile of them around and I'm just happy that they're as aggressive as they are. There's one. That one's a little bigger. He wants to fight. Probably my best of the day. Again, still pretty small. And I hooked him really good. Look at there, right in the nose, popped him. There you go. Okay, now we got something interesting. Here we go. It's gotta be a bass. Oh yeah, nice bass. Well, this'll be a good test. Can we land the big bass on the little hook? 
think I got a good good hook set on him. Now the question is, is he going to stay out of that grass? Because he is in grass now. Oh boy. Oh boy. He's in grass. I need to, I need to manipulate this fish. This is two pound monofilament and he's bogging me down in vegetation. He is literally like just buried in grass. I don't know if this is going to work. I know this fish is still on there. He's literally like there's just like this thick brush down there. Oh yeah, I felt him just shake his head. There he goes. There you go. There you go, you little stink. There he goes. See it? Look at that. There he goes. I think I might have just worked him free. Yes, sir. Not a giant. He just knows how to fight. Not a giant by any means. And it goes to show these, these larger fish can still have an appetite for the smaller stuff. Not a very big bass, but man, when they get down in that grass like that, they can be a royal pain in the butt. And look at that. Man, I got some abrasion on my line. Fortunately, I'm using monofilament. Monofilament does a pretty good job against that abrasion. And I pinned him. Little tiny peanut. And a nice chunky little bass right there. Again, not a, not a giant by any means, but always a good time on ultralight. And he, he knows how to fight, that's for sure. See ya, buddy. I'm gonna go ahead and re-rig, because like I said, this has some abrasion on it now. I think I'm gonna go ahead and maybe try a different plastic. I'm gonna stay with the same jig, though. Um, just kind of mix things up a little bit. Ooh, it's my last one. I'm gonna have to buy another pack for myself. Uh, Chartreuse Donkey Tail Jr. Now, I know you're probably thinking, Ethan, you literally just caught your best fish of the day, and now you're switching plastics? You're crazy. Well, yeah, maybe I am a little crazy, but I gotta be honest with you. I just feel like we can do just a little bit better today. I feel like we can do a little more damage. And I like the fact that the Donkey Tail Jr. is gonna allow me to kind of cover a little more water because it has a little bit more of an active action. What I mean by that is it's got the boot tail, so it's gonna swim. So I can just cast and retrieve this puppy. The Mule Minnow is designed a little bit more for vertical presentations and then twitching, drifting, um, so on and so forth. But as far as just casting and winding, I probably wouldn't just cast and wind the Mule Minnow personally. That is definitely another thing I designed this bait for. Ah, oh, shoot. Oh my gosh, it's a nice fish. I thought it was literally snagged. This is something else that I kind of designed this bait for, was dock shooting. I shot it so far under there, I literally thought I had like a dock post or something, and then it started moving. It's another nice little chunky bass. He was way under there, way under there. Not a big bass by uh, any means, but for ultralight, Another solid one. And um, like I said, it's kind of got that flat bottom to the head. And so what happens is when you shoot it under there and it hits, it's going to keep skipping nice and far. So uh, that was definitely intentional. Putting that flatter bottom obviously does a couple things, but dock shooting is definitely gonna be something you can do with this little jig right here. Again, not a giant bass, but a nice healthy one. See you, buddy. There's one. Thank you. I've been waiting for you, Mr. Bluegill. And we got a good one too. Nice, healthy one. Look at that, beautiful fish. Beautiful fish right there. There you go, nice little bluegill right there, healthy fish. There you go. Probably a crappie. Oh, big gill. There you go. This is the type of fishing I was expecting, my friends. Sitting in 10 foot of water, we got a lot of chop on the water because we've had tons of boats go by me. And I just was vertically jigging this fish. He was right under the boat. Nice little female bluegill right there. Sweet. Well, I tell you what, today's definitely been kind of weird. We've been just kind of junk fishing today. The fish are kind of scattered and kind of acting funny, but we've caught a lot, so I'm not necessarily going to complain. I'm obviously very pleased with the workhorse jig, but if I'm being honest with you, I think the mule jig would have probably outperformed it today. But that really leads me to my point. You know, the workhorse jig and the mule jig are meant to be fished two totally different ways. And that's kind of my goal with mule fishing. It's not about just bringing out gear just to bring out gear. Ultimately, I want to create a system that you can rely on for multi-species light line fishing in any condition. And I'd be lying to myself if I told you that the mule jig works for every single condition out there. It absolutely does not. And that's where the workhorse jig is hopefully going to be a really good complement jig to the mule jig. Anyways, I am rambling. I've only got a few more minutes to fish, so we're gonna fish hard. And then I'm gonna go home, probably have a burrito for dinner, which I'm obviously extremely excited about because how can you not be excited about burritos? I mean, it's just kind of like one of those things where you just like, you always have to be, okay. I'm rambling about burritos, so let's get back to fishing. There's another. Yeah, this spot, something about this spot. 
I did well here on crappie. Look at that. Hooked him good. I uh, did well here on crappie like uh, like a month ago probably. And uh, seems like there's still fish here. And it's really not all that deep. I'm sitting in 12 foot of water. That fish was probably in about eight. There's another one. Feels a little bigger, but I don't know that it is. It is not. This place is overpopulated with smaller crappie. Here in about a year or two, hopefully these fish grow up a little bit to be a nice little taco size. Well, I sure have caught a lot of these little guys. So before I close out today's video, I just wanted to wrap things up real quick. You know, obviously I'm extremely excited about this workhorse jig right here. You know, in today's fishing trip, we didn't necessarily get on the bite I was hoping to. I was really hoping to find some deep suspended bluegill, but they seem to be pretty shallow. So I really think I probably would have been better off with like a 164 ounce mule jig. Either way, I was just testing it out, showing it off, and I'm excited to fish with it more in the future. Now I did want to point out just one quick thing, you know, this is the 1 16th ounce workhorse jig right here. Well, this is a 1 16th ounce mule jig. You can see it's obviously a much different head design, but also the mule jig in the 1 16th and 3 32nd ounce sizes has a four hook. This has a six hook, and that size six hook is really designed to be fished with small baits, micro baits. The Donkey Tail Junior, the Horsefly, the Mule Minnow 1.2 and 2.2, one to two inch profile baits on that number six hook with light line is basically what this bait's all about. Again, you know, you've got the 1 16th, the 1 8th, and then the 3 16th, and that's really gonna unlock new waters because basically this is designed for a couple of main reasons. I don't know what I just did there. Basically, this bait is designed for a couple of main reasons. Covering water, fishing in wind, and then deeper water presentations, but still maintaining that micro profile. So I'm excited to do that more in the future. Make sure to stay tuned because I'm gonna be fishing with this a lot. Otherwise, if you wanna learn more about this bait, I'm actually going to post another video on the Mule Fishing YouTube channel. And then in addition, you can go to www.mulefishing.com. These are now available. Thank you so very much for supporting Mule Fishing. It really means the world to me. We would not be where we are today without you and your support. So thank you so much. I hope you have a great day. We'll catch you next time.